Welcome to this second video analyzing To My Father by Tony Curtis. In this video we're going to focus on the second stanza only, so if you haven't seen the analysis of the first stanza I strongly recommend you watch that video first. In this video what I'd like to achieve is a greater understanding of how the language and the literary techniques are used in the second stanza and what those language choices reveal. This is the stanza that we're going to analyse I wanted to take the smooth grip of a rope and lean my weight into it. I wanted timing. I wanted you to teach me, to teach my son's son. As soon as you read this first stanza, you probably noticed the repeated beginnings of these lines. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. The technique being used here by the poet is anaphora. And perhaps that repeating of the phrase, I wanted, it could show that the son's desire to connect and his frustration that he was denied a relationship. It may show the relationship to be one-sided, how he was constantly trying to have a relationship with his father, and yet his father remained closed off like the jammed trap door we saw previously. Perhaps his father did not require this level of effort or this level of love. Now, these repeated declaratives are showing how angry he is at the relationship that was withheld from him. So considering the use of anaphora here is definitely worth our time. As we take a look at the next couple of words, it says, I wanted to take. Now, the word take here shows that the son wanted to accept this thing that his father seems to be interested in, the bell ringing. It suggests that he wanted a connection. He wanted his father to be more open and to be more giving. He wanted to be a part of his experiences. He wanted to take part in these activities so that he could share those memories with his father. The next piece of imagery we get is a piece of imagery describing the smooth grip. And here we've got the pre-modifying adjective smooth, which may show the amount of use that the rope has had, perhaps from the hours and hours of investment that his father put into his bell ringing. Now, perhaps he wanted to pull a rope and that would bring his father closer to him. Perhaps by pulling on the rope, he believes he will be able to get that relationship with his father. The adjective smooth could be seen as tactile imagery here, showing that the son wants to feel what the father can give him. He wants to reenact the types of activities that his father used to do. He wants to share in those memories. The final part where it says of a rope, it may show how this son's desire to capture his relationship with his father. Ropes are used to bind things. Ropes are used to tie things. Here, perhaps the idea of holding the rope means that in some way he will be able to capture the relationship he would like with his father. The line doesn't stop there. It continues through enjambment and ends with, and lean my weight into it. I think we could probably link this piece of imagery to the imagery of the previous stanza, when we had bells that were poised, balanced, ready to make noise, ready to be pulled, ready to be brought to life, and yet tragically remaining silent because the effort was never truly invested. Where it says, and lean my weight into it, it seems to be that the son wants to fully invest himself in this relationship. He wants to pull his father closer to him with all of his might. He's ready to invest himself completely. The preposition into tells us how he wants to fully immerse himself in their relationship. If he were to pull on this rope, communication would follow. The bells would burst into life. We'd hear their voices. I think there is a suggestion here that Curtis would love the channels of communication to be open with his father and tragically never were. We could link this really clearly with Emin Humphreys' poem From Father to Son.
the communication there broke down completely. I would link this to the image of the overcoat that stifles communication despite a desire to communicate. The next line is a short line, nice clear end stopped line. It says, I wanted timing. Firstly, timing is very important to bell ringing. You do need to make sure that the timing is absolutely perfect so that the bells can make their noises in particular, chimes in particular uh, patterns. However, the word timing could also show the son's need to capture the right moment to engage with his father. Perhaps there's an implication that the son feels had he just been able to find the right moment to be with his father, the exact right moment with his father in the exact right mood, then perhaps things would have been different and tragically could never find that perfect time to connect with his father and they continued to drift further and further apart. He then says, I wanted you to teach me to teach my son's son. And you'll notice lots of repetition in the, that final line. If we focus first on the use of pronouns in this final section, you can see the second person pronoun placing all emphasis for the disappointment on his father. Now, not only did he want to learn from his father, he wanted his father to accept his role. He wanted his dad to be his dad. I wanted you. All of the effort seems to be made by the son in this case. Now you can see that the personal pronoun me is separate from you, highlighting their continuing distance. And that's something that we see throughout the poem. If we take a look at from father to son, Humphreys finds it really difficult to use the word me. That personal pronoun is very often replaced with the word you signifying their distance. Here, the use of the words you and me both kept apart, highlights the distance that these two men tragically couldn't close. Where it says, teach me, I think we see that the son may feel like his father neglected his duty. It's not the job of the child to desperately ask to be taught. Normally, parents are the people who are constantly giving their kind of tutelage, giving their learning to their sons or daughters. Here, his desperation to be taught shows a desire for connection and a desire for intimacy. Now, he was really receptive to his, his father. He would have eagerly accepted his tutelage. He was desperate for that connection. However, tragically, he never got that teaching. He never got that communication. He never got that openness. And that seems to affect him in adulthood. The final part of the stanza is to teach my son's son. Now here, the son, the persona of this poem, may feel like the lasting consequences of his father's distance are a disconnect between him and his lineage. His lineage here are his, his family line. He can no longer continue the heritage of his ancestors. There seems to be a break in the link. Presumably, bell ringing was passed from father to son, from father to son, and from father to son. It seems to be almost like a connection with past, a connection with the rest of the family. However, here, because of the neglect of the father, he can no longer continue this heritage. Perhaps he feels distanced from his past. He cannot engage with his family line and there may be a hint that the distance between him and his father could cause ripples in the future with his own son. He seems to feel a sense of loss, loss of what could have been, a relationship that could have been better and skills that he no longer has and he firmly places that blame at the feet of his father. Now that we've analysed some of the language and some of the techniques employed by Curtis, I'm hoping you can see how this stanza continues to build on that feeling of disappointment that we see in the first stanza. Take a look at the next video to have a look at the analysis of stanza three.